We care about landscapes because we need to move beyond the sectorial land use planning, land use implementation that we've been consistently used to, particularly in terms of forestry, agriculture and other land uses. And the whole landscape's theme, if you like, is about bringing together all of those different disciplines into an integrated management system. Yeah, so building on what Terry said about moving beyond the, the individual sectors, it's also about moving beyond the, the project cycle duration, basically. So we're looking at longer temporal scales and larger spatial scales, and also looking at multi-scalarity within those landscapes. So whatever the unit of analysis is, you're trying to consider what's happening from the scale below and also the scale above as well. So global commitments and how they filter down to national implementation and landscape implementation plans. Landscapes can't be managed as a project. They can, they can only be really managed as a process. So this holistic approach really is the way forward. And it's also a way of conforming to the, the sustainable development goals because they are much more in, inclusive of broader integrated processes. Yeah, I think that's the whole premise of the landscape approach uh, ethos, if you like. It's, it, shouldn't, it really shouldn't be one entity taking control. It's, it's about bringing stakeholders together, having a participatory collaborative process, and yeah, essentially negotiating what people's needs and aspirations are from that landscape. So there's another element here in, in terms of um, thinking about who's actually living and working in these landscapes. And currently there are two billion people living and working in very complex landscape mosaics. Most of these people are farmers. 70% of the world's food is generated from such landscapes. So I suspect that you know, we've got a very top-down Western perception of the landscape approach in, in terms of it has to be imposed. I suggest and suspect that actually it's already happening in many respects, that people who live and work in these complex landscapes already live and work in a holistic manner. They understand the complexities of the different land uses within their, their landscapes. And I think that was, that's what needs to be harnessed, the bottom-up approach. But it needs obviously a, a, a policy framework, a sort of guiding framework. But I think the real impetus is going to be, be coming from those two billion people Work, living and working in these complex landscapes and how we have to really focus on how we can harness that energy and that perspective. We have a lot of commitments for sustainable development goals, for climate change, and over the last few years there's been a number of uh, documents that have come out that have basically said how much that these commitments are going to cost to put into action. And so we've done a recent paper which basically looked at how much money is currently available and how much, current, how much money is required to fulfill these objectives. And this is a real issue. There is a big gap currently between what's required and what's actually available. And, and of course, one of the biggest problems with, with, with funding is it, it's also on a very short-term cycle. So we need to start thinking much more in the long term. So if we want to move from project to process, we have to find mechanisms in order to fund that. It's already started to happen. We're starting to see silos break down. Although we have independent declarations on forestry and agriculture, the sustainable development goals really sort of take us one level above that and show how everything's interconnected. As a really good example, we went to um, a conference in Jakarta recently, um, coordinated by the EAT Foundation. Five ministries from Indonesia were represented, all talking to each other about how to transform the food system in the Asia Pacific region. Now that's progress, that wouldn't have happened two or three years ago. We often hear this paradigm shift, we want transformational change, but we can't expect it to happen overnight. But progress is happening, it's, it is going to take time, but as long as we're moving in the right direction, you know, that's, it's positive.